It is great delight to introduce this fine specimen of a gentleman, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause for Adam. And so I said to Adam, you've got, you are the man to come to the show and tell these amazing people about marketing your care home. And this guy is the guru. He's an absolute amazing. I'm absolutely delighted to, uh, to see you here today, Adam. I was actually a journalist before I went into public relations, PR, and, uh, and I niched down to help uh, care homes, care providers get more inquiries via PR and marketing in order to fill their beds faster and secure their home faster. So my background is in journalism, that's where it all came from, but really niched down into helping care providers use PR and marketing methods, proven PR and marketing methods. And I, I found Adam online on Facebook and I liked what I saw, it was about, it was a, no, it's a nursing home, it's a nursing home care managers Facebook group and I thought, well, that, that's me. So I'm, I'm a registered manager of Birdell Park Nursing Home. I've also got a care home for learning disabilities and so this was what I was about. And I've been watching this guy, Adam, for, for probably about two years. And some of the stuff is absolutely golden gems, all completely free. He's got a fantastic YouTube. And so that's why, so that's how the relationship started. So Adam's got the six top tips he's going to take you through. Thank you, Jonathan. Look, the main thing is, if you want to promote your home, because as we want to get more inquiries, um, and fill your beds faster, the good news is journalists love care homes. Now your audiences who you want to, to reach will be local. And local journalists love care homes. You, every single home, should be able to secure 8 to 12 positive media stories per year. And that includes BBC and ITV television, local BBC radio, and of course the newspapers. Uh, and online. Why do journalists love care homes? Because you have great stories. If I, I know if I went to any of these care homes right now, there would be four or five great stories. I mean, what you're doing for dementia care, your personalised care, what your staff are doing. Dementia care is big, big news. Now, who are the, who are the experts in dementia care? You guys. So, Dementia care is loved by journalists because it's also a public interest healthcare issue. So, I'll come later about how you can present your stories on a plate for journalists, but the big message I want to convey today is that you have great stories within your home. If you pitch them right to the right journalists, you will get that positive media coverage on an ongoing basis promoting your care to local audiences. And prior to Adam, so I, I heard about this, so Adam said you've got to be promoting all the time. Prior to this, we used a PR company. Now, Adam's got a fantastic PR company. But most homes, if you've got a little bit of determination and you've got someone who can quickly put some words together, most homes can probably do this themselves, you know? Adam doesn't mind me sort of saying that. There's a lot of homes that haven't got the time, particularly care groups, and they say, look, Adam, can you give us a hand? So we started now pushing out good news stories on a weekly basis. Now, not all of them go through, but I started building up a database of reporters and journalists who were pretty, who wanted positive stories. It's not always doom and gloom. And so we started building and building and pretty much routinely now, the local newspaper will have something in, if not a weekly, certainly fortnightly basis. And it was what it was following Adam's top tips about how to find the journalists. Do, do you want to tell people how, how you find them? Well, I mean, it depends which journalists you're going after. But let's say you want to target the local BBC. Ideally, you want them to come into your home and do a great story, let's say, around dementia. For example, I think something we've done recently is around the dementia choir a particular care home has. So full of it's a great story, it's about how at that particular activity can um, provide therapies that benefit to people with dementia and reminiscence and all of that. So how do you find your local BBC reporter? Well, the key thing here is you can, A, you can find them on Twitter, you can have a conversation with them on Twitter. But my key 
advice here is if you want to build a relationship with your local BBC and local ITV, is find out the editor who's planning the weeks ahead. They're often called an, an editor, a scheduler. They are the people who are telling the journalists what to cover over the next few weeks. Find his or her details and ring up the BBC. Who's your scheduler? Who's your editor? Who's your commissioner? Find his or her details. You can deduce what their email address is. First name dot, second name dot, at bbc.co.uk. That's what it usually is. And then you start to have that conversation and you pitch your stories to them. And once you've got in, for example, the local BBC and local ITV television, they will come to you often again and again and again. Why? Because you are the experts in social care in the region they cover. And to give you an idea of how successful this has been in the last year, so routine, so the discipline now is that I am hyper aware in, in my lovely care home with my beautiful people in their beds. We've got 34 very sick people. Well, that doesn't mean you go around with your camera starting getting 34 pictures of 34 very sick people. But there are events, there's news about the scar, there's news about we've just been shortlisted for some awards, there's news about us trying to recruit, there's lots and lots of stories. There's some amazing stories about veterans. I've got 13 amazing veterans, forces veterans, who are in my beds. You would never have known that. There are guys who fought or were part of the Montebello operation in 1952-1953 with Christmas Island and the nuclear bomb testing. It is absolutely amazing. So there's loads of stories out there. So routinely, following Adam's advice, I then started just it's literally 200 words, 250 words, with, with one or two or three really good photos in there with the little captions on them. To give you an idea how successful it's been, in the last year, year a snapshot today, we had eight to nine fee private pay, uh, private residents. We've now got 17 private residents in the same home. It means our fees we can command are significantly higher. The turnover now per calendar month, per calendar month is now 20 to 25 thousand pounds greater than it was a year ago and that's all through publicity so we're continually broadcasting all the time broadcasting broadcasting and people are now inbound contact me via facebook or they phone the home direct and they're fee paying private children who are saying mom and dad you know i want to plan this so this stuff does work it takes time and can i just add from what you're here you're, you're talking about here johnson so this is if you are if you are after more private pays, you are as a home probably getting a certain amount of inquiries from private pays per month. You bet you know that what it is. But if you are after and how are you getting those private pays? It's usually for the word of mouth. What you are doing effectively through PR and marketing is amplifying that word of mouth. So if you want more inquiries, you have to amplify that word about. You have to literally tell more people about the great care that you offer. So Adam, there's a few more slides here. So don't pitch marketing story. Do you want to say just really briefly on that? Yeah, very briefly. Um, all, there's so many good news stories coming in your, from your homes. Um, when you are pitching to journalists, the one, one thing they want is always a good story. So, as I mentioned, dementia choir activities, therapeutic reminiscence of how you're helping residents, the human interest is very, very strong. If you start pitching journalists what they consider as marketing, i.e., this is the care we offer and we've got so many beds to fill, they're not interested. They would say, sorry, that's an ad, you need to pay for it. Same again for recruitment. Now, I know but recruitment is a burning issue for you all, but recruitment stories, you're looking to recruit so and so, it's also often seen as advertising. And journalists don't like that. Adam, let's, let's show some of the, the good news stories that you've been responsible for. So, do you want to talk through this? So, 
in fact, um, the uh, owner of this home is in the audience right now. Come on, so done a good thing. Raise, raise your hands. Woo! Big round of applause. <laughs> Look, all of your homes do all this stuff. Intergenerational, dazzling zimmers, shortlisted for care awards. You do this. Exploit it. Get the coverage. I'm going to give you, as I said, after walked into any of your homes right now, I know there'll be six or seven things off the cuff. That would get you this kind of exposure. And in terms of writing for this, so, so how, what would you, what would you advise? Okay, 300 words. Present the stories as, I mean, I'm a journalist, so this is what I do, obviously. But present the stories on a plate to the journalist. What I mean by there is the headline for the story. Often these headlines that we see are, are actually kind of written by us. We are presenting the story on a plate. So you've got the headline, email subject line, that's your headline. Then you've got the 350 word story. Quotes from the manager, quotes from the residents, ideally, I, I, I understand consent, and their families and their staff and your staff. Bring all those quotes in, bring the story to life. Get some good photos. Look at the difference you get on the, in the papers, at least, when you have good photos. But that's a whole page. That's a whole page. I think that's a whole page. Photos make a massive difference. Tip number four, if you want a good photographer, ring up your local paper, ask them who is their best freelance photographer. They'll give you their name, their address. You use them to take good quality photos like that. The bonus is that that freelance photographer is used to submitting editorial photos to that paper. Superb. And we've got another one there. So this one, do you want to talk, this is, who went, just a show of hands, who might have seen this on social media? It went absolutely bonkers. Yeah. So, well, this is actually, uh, we're coming on to this later, this is actually uh, what we call accelerated engagement on Facebook. It's a particular campaign, and it was part of an initiative where we're helping a particular home. But, um, yeah, I mean, this was an extraordinary... I mean, it was essentially my colleague, Danielle, she came, found out that this home was doing something that was actually really interesting. There's some staff wearing their pyjamas at night time, so when a resident of dementia walked out, they were kind of reminded, oh, it's not actually better. It's actually time for me to go to sleep. So it was a, this is all down to my colleague Danielle. She picked this up as a, as a good story, put it on Facebook, uh, and then also as part of a a campaign to raise money for a local charity, I think it was a dementia charity, so again, building up this relationship, it literally went viral. It was uh, 14 million people. 14 million. This is now, this is now, this Facebook page for this home now has 8,000 likes, it had 200 before. Oh my God. So, so, this, so there's all these little stories all within every single one of your homes. There's people that you don't know who've got the most amazing backstory. There's things that your, your beautiful people are doing, which just putting a little bit of an angle on it, you think, well, that's fantastic. So, but also, I've put this up here. There's a rather solemn face Cunningham here. Right, this, there is news in bad news. This happened, I put this out to the newspapers as we were mixed up. Barton Park was a care home where the owner was jailed for 23 years for fraud. It was awful. And we got mixed up. So Barton Park and Burtdale Park sounds very similar. Now, one person phoned up and just said, are you that home that collects Ferraris and doing those nasty things with those people? I said, no. I said, we're Burtdale Park. I said, we've got rickshaws and we love, we love our people. And I suddenly realised there's a story there. Because if that's one person that said something, then there's a whole lot, lot of people who aren't saying that. So I put out a rather sullen-faced, rather cross-looking Jonathan there in front of our sign saying, we got mixed up. That went out over the internet on Facebook, Twitter, and also the local, um, local news online. It got so many hits with people and heartfelt testimonials saying, oh my god, my mum was in your place and my grand was there and it was the most beautiful home. I can't believe it mixed. We got all these testimonials. So in bad news, there is news. 
The one, the other one was our rickshaw therapy. We've got a rickshaw. I saw that on Facebook. I thought, what a great idea. I found a rickshaw in Blackpool, reconditioned it, and now I take my lovelies out in, in Southport for ice cream on the end of the pier. It was fantastic. So that then turns rickshaw therapy. So that was, that's another good news story from something which is a little bit quirky. And we've got a video. Mm -hmm. Oh, this, this, was a, this is what we did. So last year, again, we're just talking about different ways. It was Bertie who filmed me on a rickshaw dressed as an elf. So you've got to do that. If you want extraordinary results, you've got to do extraordinary stuff. So I dress as an elf. I've still got the ears. With my lovely little Jenny. She's absolutely gorgeous. And my uh, previous school teacher, Jim. And we go for a ride. It got 402,000 views on Unilad. It was just lovely, heartfelt, ex-army guy, soldier, takes his lovelies out, it was great, bless his health. Yeah. Who wouldn't go with that story? And there's another one here, just to give you about the power of social media. That one there was in our learning disabilities home. I filmed 13 seconds, so don't do great big swings, 13 seconds, Twitter loves it, Facebook loves it, LinkedIn loves it. I put that out on LinkedIn, just saying this is my why, this is why I do what I do. Shoved it out and we got 161,000 views of my lo lovely guys with Mexican hats doing hula hula in front, not as good as me, and it just went mad. So there are stories there that you can promote your home. Q recruitment. Q recruitment. Yeah, so recruitment. That's so, where I, Adam, that's where you say. Haven't you got a video about some recruitment? I said that five to ten seconds. Thirty seconds ago. I haven't so, even got a video on that. That's the one. Funny enough, I do actually Adam. So we we did a video recently, instead of the usual uh, so we, we don't tend not to use uh, the recruitment websites. So Cunningham with his, his selfie stick, we did a, a recruitment video and I just want to show you, it's about one minute and it, it got so many likes, we got six amazing candidates and they all turned up, ladies and gentlemen, for the interview, come on! Let's see if it works. Parker. We are after a fabulous person for a KP cook appointment here at our fabulous home here in Southport. So we are after you. If you are interested in becoming our KP and cook here at Burtdale Park, then we are desperate to see you here once again at Burtdale Park. There's our Kev, Kev, our fabulous maintenance chap there, brushing up our leaves. So let me, let me tell you, it is a cracking home. We love developing people and we love making sure that we look after our gorgeous residents here, 34 gorgeous residents here at Bertel Park. So here's our little star board with all our doodles on. Let me, let me just take you into the domain, the fantastic domain that is the kitchens. And we've got the amazing Michael here. There he is, he just loves this. There you are. <laughs> I do look now, good four years. He's from Australia. But we do not hold that against him. Do we? Do we, Mike? No, not at all. So uh, this is the domain, fabulous. And so we're after someone to be a kitchen, KP and cook here at Burtdale Park. So if this interests you, if you want to be a fabulous team member for uh, this amazing home on our route to Outstanding, then get in touch uh, with Burtdale Park. I'll leave your details in here, DM me, and we will see you very soon. <laughs> Bye for now. Jeez, how annoying is that? Can you imagine working with me? I'm even more annoyed. So we got some great hits over that. So it's not just about positivity, but it's, it's also about retaining your staff because they see yourself in the news and also about recruiting amazing, amazing people. What else we got here, Adam? Let's see. I've got... Hello? Not that again. So, do you want to sum up, Adam? Um, well, just on the subject, yes, of... of um of Facebook, just one thing at what time is it? We've got, uh, all right, two minutes. I was talking to you about, before, about those good news stories from your home. You've written the story on a plate for your journalists. You've got these great editorial photos. 
you've pitched that story to the journalists, they've covered it in the papers, it's gone online. Now, see, my tip here is to think how that exact same story can be used as a separate Facebook post. Facebook is different. Facebook is about friends sharing with friends. So you, what I always suggest is tweak that story that you've got on for your that you pitch to the media as a separate Facebook post and put sometimes even a small boost behind it, that's maybe 30, 40 pounds, and you can see it go reach tens of thousands of people as opposed to 100 and 150. And I'll give you one quick example. We pitched a story for a care home on Betty, her name was celebrating her 100th birthday. You all know what this is about. The home provided great personal care for this resident who um, loved fashion, so they had a special fashion day for her. Pitched the story to the media. The media did a lovely full page, photos of day. How can we make that exact same story but tweaked for Facebook to make it really work? You change the headline on that Facebook post. So this particular resident, Betty, what was the secret to her long life, she says, everything in moderation except for shopping. Fine. So the headline on the Facebook post was, do you want to know the secret to a long life? Everybody wants to know the secret to a long life. Then you have Betty telling her story together with the quotes from her family, the, 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 the home manager, and you hold, had the whole full story and great set of editorial photos. What happened to that particular post? 10, 9,000, 10,000 people reached. Why? Because they were interested in the content. It was engaging for them. And also they were congratulating Betty on her birthday. So literally, comments, comments, comments down here, engagement amplified. Adam, just taking to Facebook, do you want to talk about Facebook Live and the difference in terms of boost? between just a normal Facebook ad or just a normal Facebook post and then going live, whether it be music, whether it be whatever. Yeah, I mean, Facebook, Facebook itself likes to promote its own Facebook Live. So use it. More and more and more of what you will be doing will be about video. Yeah, none of us like, like to do it at first. I, do, I now do it the whole time. The first time I did it, I hated it. I felt uncomfortable. But Facebook Live, for example, and all video, but Facebook Live is a way that you can engage with your local audiences if you want to promote your home to local audiences, which you probably do, and Facebook Live is a key way to do that, and Facebook likes it as well. Yeah, super.